The DJI specs give the Mini 2 as having a max flight time of 31 minutes, but there's a nice little caveat in there, basically under ideal flying conditions. So today I'm going to see what those conditions are and to see how long you actually get in the air under normal flying conditions. Hello, I'm Ian, and finally, no wind, no rain for what seems like a few weeks here in the UK. So I've got the Mini 2, and I'm going to be pushing its battery to the limit today. Uh, DJI, as I said, advertise a max flight time of 31 minutes. Practice, you're no, never going to come close to that. Uh, different features and the way you fly are going to eat into that battery a little bit quicker. Also, of course, you've got the automatic return to home and these uh, various landing protocols that are going to kick in. Now, on those, I am going to override them. It's never a good idea to do that because they're there to design to protect your drone. But also, it's never great to push your battery right down to zero because it can actually damage the battery. But um, for the interest of this test, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm not going to just do a straightforward hover test because you actually get a slightly longer flight time if you are flying slowly. Uh, I'm going to be flying in normal mode, not sports mode. I did a full throttle uh, sports mode test on the Mini 1 and uh, you could see from that video how flying flat out uh, really eats into the battery. But today what I'm trying to do is actually see how long a flight you can get when flying in normal everyday conditions. Now I could turn off video streaming and I could also turn off landing protection because those are both little processes that are going to be slowly but slightly draining the battery. But my idea, as I said, is to get a real world flight test. So normal mode, flying slowly around five to 10 miles an hour max. Uh, there's no wind today. I'll be flying around in a figure of eight or a circle. And uh, let's see how far we get to stay in the air before it finally drops to the ground. Okay, full satellite lock, 100% battery, let's go. So, not wasting time trying to get up to any altitude here. This is low level slow flying. Um, for the purposes of uh, you guys at home, I will be speeding up this part of the video. <coughs> this is going to be one boring flight. <laughs> Hopefully it'll look a bit better uh, when it's all sped up. <coughs> So the air temperature also plays a bit of a role in how much battery life you're going to get. Uh, ideally you'd be flying in around 60, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 10, 15 degrees centigrade. Uh, a little bit cooler than that today, but um, hopefully it won't make too much of a uh, difference. And again, it's all real world flying. <clears throat> bit of a grim morning, and I have to say actually this week one of the best things I picked up is a little rechargeable hand warmer. Uh, this one's from Akupa. And, um, Oh God, it makes such a nice difference uh, when you're flying. Um, I really don't know how they do it actually. Uh, 15 hours of uh, hand warmth and it's just like holding a hot egg in your pocket basically. Uh, good to keep your batteries at a good temperature uh, if you don't overheat them. But um, it's really nice to have something very warm just to uh, hold on whilst, uh, whilst you're flying. Put the link below for that. <clears throat> because it was only about 30 quid or um, $30. And uh, I was like, okay. This makes all the difference when you're sitting out here for half an hour trying to do a long, uh, a long flight. So one of the big improvements DJI made to the Fly app recently was the uh, battery and countdown um, indicator. So top right, you can see the estimated uh, remaining flight time that's um, going to keep on updating 
depending on how fast you're flying and how much battery you've got. And next to it, you've actually got the coloured uh, battery indicator, which is good when you're, if you look up there, you see even when you're up against a bright sky, you can still see the uh, coloured battery indicator, which is a, a nice little improvement. When you tap the uh, battery indicator, you get three figures. Uh, you've got a countdown until return to home. You've got the uh, countdown until forced landing. As I said, you can actually temporarily override that forced landing. Uh, you can lift the left stick and it will um, keep on rising up. But the moment you let go of that left stick, it will try and land. And then you finally got the until battery depleted. And you'll see that that bottom figure matches the uh, remaining flight time figure that you're seeing in the top right. So again, I think it's a little bit misleading for you to, the, the default display you've got in the top right is actually until the battery is exhausted down to zero percent and it's going to force land. But um, anyway, it gives you a good indication of the maximum flight time you've got left. Now we've been flying for nine minutes and 25 seconds and it's saying we've got 18 and a half minutes until the battery is depleted. So we're still knocking on the door of 27, 28, uh, 29 minutes there. So um, it's looking good, flying slowly. That new battery indicator display is fantastic though. I do love being able to see exactly how much time I've got until uh, the uh, return to home is gonna kick in and until forced landing. It does kind of stop you uh, taking a gamble, it stops you guessing, and uh, it does give you the uh, information to make an informed decision whether or not you're gonna push that battery to get that last shot uh, or, um, or just bring it home and, uh, and change the battery. So 13 minutes flight and it's saying we've got 15 minutes left so it's kind of pointing towards a 28 minute flight here if I go to zero battery. So coming up to 17 minutes we've flown and it's saying well, 10 and a half, 11 minutes remaining flight time. You see how that uh, remaining flight time is jumping around all over the place. It was on 11 minutes literally a few seconds ago and suddenly it's jumped down to uh, 10 minutes. Let's fly a little bit faster for a second and you can see it jumps down quite quickly. Slow down again, go down to very nice slow speed and it increases again. So hence trying to keep it at a nice low speed. So as I get as I fly back towards the takeoff point, the until return to home indicator slightly increases because obviously it knows it hasn't got so far to fly in order to get home again. So again, that top figure is the one that's gonna be recalculating the most depending on how far away from the takeoff point you're currently flying. That full throttle uh, video I did on the original Mini was uh, a lot easier, you just kept your your right finger up and it was just flying flat out all the time. This one's a little bit more fiddly, you're uh, having to try and keep it controlled. I don't want to go too fast, I don't want to go too slow. Battery level is low. So I'm going to cancel that return to home. Uh, so what are we on there? We've got almost 23 minutes before the first return to home kicked in. A 
bit of a shame that I can't cancel that annoying beep. So there we go, it's really saying, come home. So even that's quite good. It means day-to-day -day flying, you're gonna get a good 23 minutes uh, until the first return to home warning kicks in, which is still a decent amount. But if you want to push your luck, and see how much longer you've got. Let's let's carry on. Now, quite a few of you will have seen some previous videos where I've been doing this sort of thing and ending up traipsing out into the field to retrieve the drone as it auto lands. So uh, as we're getting towards the end, I'm going to be lurking around near the back garden so I don't have to get all uh, muddy and messy. So 25 minutes, oh dear. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna bring it closer to home so I'm not traipsing around in the mud. So you nag on the critical low battery. Now you see these two other figures though until forced landing. The until forced landing is when it starts descending by itself, but you can override it with the left stick and keep the altitude going. And then the until battery depleted, it's going to land and you will not be able to override that. So I'm keeping him quite close now. We're on 26 minutes and we're about to hit that initial forced landing. No, I'm not conf No. So that forced landing, you can see, I don't know if you can actually see it on the So now we've gone into the forced landing, but if I keep my finger uh, on the left stick up, it will keep on raising up. Now we're on approaching 27 minutes. <clears throat> Just gonna bring it over a little bit. Don't fancy going on that mud. So like I said, forced landing, you can override with the left stick, keep going up saying we've got 23 seconds until you can no longer override that. <clears throat> On 27 and a quarter minutes. Let's just give ourselves a cheeky little bit of extra height, just to give ourselves that extra. So, and there we go. So now it's forced landing. I can still bring it towards me, but I can't stop it actually descending. Okay, there we go. How did we do there? 27 minutes and 40 seconds. That's not too bad really, is it? Uh, so like I said, you're not really wanting to push your battery right down to zero. It's not too good for the, uh, for the battery itself. That was flying slowly, 27, that's what, four, three and a half minutes, four minutes uh, under the specs. Now, if you had turned off the uh, landing protection sensors and if I wasn't streaming, video and if I'd been flying at precisely the same forward speed and precisely the same altitude then uh, and possibly in a dead straight line continuously instead of turning then that's probably how I would have eked out that extra bit of uh, time but um, it means to me that's actually a pretty impressive result uh, pretty normal flying there on a pretty normal day a um, bit chilly as I said the temperature is going to reduce the battery efficiency as well it's around uh, 5 degrees centigrade today, so I don't know what that is, probably about 40, 43 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll take a guess at that. <clears throat> um, but look, there we go. Uh, <laughs> what that tells me is the Mini 2 is going to give you some very decent flight time. Uh, over 25 minutes, 
per battery should be more than enough for most people and with the combo obviously you're getting the three batteries so you are going to have well over an hour of actual flying time and of course the mini is one of the uh, few dji drones where you can actually plug in and uh, charge on the go so a power bank will actually uh, recharge it if you're uh, out driving for the day Anyway, look, hopefully that has been uh, useful to you. I'm going to upload the uh, results to airdata.com, uh, have a little bit of analysis, see exactly how long I flew and uh, get the precise uh, timings. But uh, for me, very, very good result there and a nice test. Very happy with it all. So as ever, look, you know, uh, thanks Ted, you know the drill here, give me a little thumbs up, really does help the video. And uh, if you haven't, hit the sub, ding that dong, get notified each time I put something out. Either way, as we go into winter, um, I hope you're still having fun. And until next time, have fun, happy flying.